love for the symbiotes is quantum the next big team and drew is back along with the rest of your questions from the mailbag and if you're ready for that the goat khabib now that you're retired tell him what to do send me a location i will smash valley florida Hello, what is up, Valley Maniacs? I am Valley Flying. Welcome to the Valley Flying channel. I hope you had a great weekend, and I hope you're ready to answer some mailbag questions from the Discord server. Now, before we get into all of that and discussing this quantum team, it's time to pay some bills, so let's give a shout out to the sponsor of this video. Have you ever dreamed of fitting an amazing AAA quality game right in your pocket? Well, now you can with Raid Shadow Legends. And it's very easy to start playing Raid. And just by logging in every day, you can get some really cool rewards that'll give your account a big boost. And you also have quests to help keep your account progress on track and get even more great rewards daily, weekly, monthly, and some advanced rewards. And there are over 500 champions in Raid Shadow Legends. And it may be tempting to go ahead and build your entire roster at once, but my advice to you, Focus on building your main champion to help get you through the campaign missions as soon as possible. You also have these dungeons here where you can get some awesome artifacts and a chance at some of the most valuable items in the game. And if you need even more Raid Shadow Legends advice, make sure to subscribe to the guide on the Teleria world. The link is also in the description. So what is new for October? Well, the Ancient Forge was just added to help save you some time crafting artifacts. You have a new advanced quest system you got even more awesome new characters and the amazing doom tower and you may be thinking to yourself those rewards they sound pretty sweet and you would be right but if you're a new player it gets even sweeter yeah if you click on the link in the description and you are brand new in your account you will receive a hundred thousand silver two raid keys three ancient shards and the rare champion adjudicator yeah she is really good in a spirit keep dungeon and all of your treasure will be waiting for you in your inbox right here but it's only going to be available for the next 30 days so use that link and check out raid today so guys if all that sounds good make sure you use the link in the description to download raid but without further ado let's go check out the information of the quantum team the searing stinger boom and this is what was discussed on the blog post last week. Did a video about this, but there are a few points that I missed that I do want to cover after some uh, reaction from the community and, and looking at this a little more myself. So traits, villain global tech blaster pim tech and his basic is a bioenergy blast. He's going to attack the primary target 250% damage. Bonus attacking for 230% damage. Still a nice move. And this is where it gets a little weird. This dark dimension stuff. Uh, special is Spiteful Sting. Energy cost 5 out of 5, so available on turn 1, but a 5 turn cooldown there. You're going to steal health from a tar primary target, redistribute it to your health or to yourself. Uh, and receiving additional 4,000 health, bypasses heal block, gaining evade, regeneration. It seems a little disappointing, honestly. So uh, we'll see how this works out when, it's, uh, when it comes to the game. See what the base stats are. See if it really makes sense to be upgrading this thing. But here's, here's the interesting Dark Dimension. Now, I'm thinking about this. Yeah, this is good for Dark Dimension, but how long are we going to do Dark Dimension? I did Dark Dimension 1 twice, never went back to it. Did Dark Dimension 2 twice, and uh, never went back to it until recently just to get that uh, little icon on that. Dark Dimension 3, went to it twice. No plans to go back to it except just for streams. So just to test out things for streams. So I don't, I don't know what how valuable this is going to be for Dark Dimension 4, but weird 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 uh you know going through a game mode once or twice and not using this again so this whole tag is kind of weird but what you're going to do is prolonging all positive effects on this character by duration of one up to a maximum of four so not really benefiting a lot of teammates just kind of uh benefiting himself and damaging the enemies here all right let's take a look at this ultimate hostile takeover this is a five energy cooldown available on turn one as he's going to gain offense up for himself, up to a maximum of three. You're going to attack the primary target, 400% damage. Adjacent targets, 350% damage. So all stuff just for himself, getting the offense up, doing damage to the enemies, which is good. But here's, here's where he starts to get some synergy with his Pym Tech and Villain Tech allies on kill. So kill from this move, applying two random positive effects to self and all Pym Tech allies. Then you're going to repeat 
this attack targeting the most injured enemies so not not clear yet on if you attack the most injured enemy if this whole process repeats my guess is it does not but at the time of this recording still no information from the dev team about uh about this if, it, if it's just gonna keep going and going or if it's just one time now what i do like is that there's synergy with a villain tech allies and i know a lot of community was speculating this ultron is gonna be very good in this team and maybe he is but when we look at the passive, I think that a full Pimtech team is supposed to be used for this Dark Dimension. Maybe, maybe it's not the most effective and Ultron will slot into one of those spots. But uh, let's take a look at this passive and see why. And it's, it's actually right down here in this second part of it. We'll, we'll talk about this first one in a little bit. But the it says he's going to gain 20% damage for self. So more and more self buffs, but also Pimtech allies, not villain tech allies. So... Uh, not getting missing out on that damage that extra 20% damage if you're bringing in other villain tech uh, allies but I'm not sure if, uh, if they have such strong synergy I'm not sure if that's uh, that bad of a thing and his passive also includes this move right here while he has offense up and he's getting that maybe from someone else on this pim tech team maybe maybe just on this opening move of his his ultimate but when he has offense up he's going to get extra 20% speed and extra drain so Getting more damage based on the amount or getting more health back based on the damage he does. So interesting kit. I am curious to see what the rest of this Pimtech team shorts out to be. See if it's actually going to be with Pimtech allies, Villain Tech allies. What is going to be the ultimate team here? And will they get more value outside of just Dark Dimension 3? I think some of the speculation was a war defense team, but who knows? And the speculation is still... The legendary unlock for whoever the next legendary character is. And with that said, let's get to all of your questions from the mailbag, guys. Boom. First question of the week. I noticed a disturbing trend amongst a few content creators. Why do some of you seem to be just so disparaging of early game legendary? Star Lord in particular seems to be the flavor of the week. I know they don't hold up forever. No character truly does. Why are you guys so brutal about them? Those players starting out need somewhere to start. No reason to be mean-spirited. I don't know. Are, were we mean-spirited? I think a lot of his jokes. But uh, yes, I, I think he's a very good character for newer game players, mid-game players. Uh, but once you finish Dark Dimension 2, uh, I think there's a lot of other teams that open up and uh, he, he starts to really fall down. So my reckon, he's not, he's not a horrible character. He's not a bad character, but... After you get past that uh, early game, mid game part of the game and start to get some other teams, there, there's teams that are a lot better for what he does. And uh, he just really drops off. So my recommendation is not to not get him. You should unlock Star-Lord. You should build up Star-Lord. But I probably would not take him past gear tier 12 just to save some of your orange gear for some other characters. I probably not would not recommend him for Dark Dimension 2 either at this point. Uh, unless, unless he's one of your characters and you have Minerva. Unless he's one of the only characters you have. Excuse me. And unless you have Minerva also, those make a good pair for Dark Dimension 2. But outside of that, I, I still would not recommend him for later game players. Uh, once you start to get a lot better characters, uh, he really falls off. And I, I really don't use him at all nowadays. So that, that is why I'm not recommending him. But uh, if you're newer, if you're mid-game, maybe you haven't been to Dark Dimension 2 yet, uh, I, I still recommend him. I just uh, don't think you're going to get a lot of use out of him long term right now. Uh, Valley Fine, love your content. Keep your great work. I've been saving my Red Star Orb specifically for Anti Venom. That that is very smart. I have about 100 save. I had about 100 saved up. Open my first orb, receive a seven star Anti Venom. What? My goodness, and you are like lucky McLuck. My goodness, first seven star ever. Just had to share this. Anyway, my question is: Do you think Symbiotes will be the new top meta over all teams, or will Black Order still rank up the highest? So. Uh, let me talk about the two teams that are really heavily invested in recently. And the first was the Black Order. The second is the Symbiotes. I think they do different things. I still think that the Black Order is going to be dominant on arena offense, arena defense. I prefer the Black Order as an offense team in arena rather than some of these hybrid teams. I think they're just a little more consistent. And then as far as the raids, I think the most dominant team is going to be the Symbiotes uh, if they're not already. I think they are very close to the ready, but... Uh, yeah, the, the symbiotes are going to be for Reyna and the Black Order is going to be for, excuse me, the symbiotes are going to be for Raid. The Black Order is going to be for Arena. So that's how I think it's shaping up. So if you're talking about the Raid meta team, I think they are the Raid meta team right now. Uh, so the, yeah, hope, hopefully that helps and hopefully it helps you planning your building decisions on the symbiotes. Hello from England, my brother. My question is DD3 related. I'm taking in the Super 6, Symbiote Spider-Man, Hella, Maw, Phoenix, Carnage, but... I'm thinking of taking another global with Phoenix, but the limited resources 
Uh, limit me just to the following. Mr. Sinister at six red, six yellow star, Colossus, four red, four yellow star. I'm not sure if the reds on Sinister outweigh the synergy of Colossus and Phoenix. Uh, in my opinion, they don't. Unless, uh, and if someone has some different experience firsthand with this, let me know. But I think Colossus is going to be uh, the better choice here for specifically for Dark Dimension 3. Colossus is the protector of Phoenix and Phoenix on the unlimited nodes, on the global nodes, is the MVP, particularly because of that Dark Phoenix special. So if Colossus is gonna help her with those taunts, he's getting some defense up, he's getting some death proofs, and he's gonna survive a little longer than Mr. Phoenix, uh, excuse me, and Mr. Sinister, Mr. Phoenix, what the heck is that? All right, he's gonna survive a little longer than Mr. Sinister, in my opinion, because and he's gonna help Dark Phoenix to survive a little longer, which is more important. Her special percent based damage, very important with these enemies with big high health pools in Dark Dimension 3. So I think, I think getting Dark Phoenix protecting her is more important than a clone than uh, spreading debuffs or spreading buffs all across the enemies now the reason that i don't like mr sinister as much in dark dimension theory very long cooldown so you're not being able to clone every single turn you're not getting a special to spread buffs spread some healing every single turn so i think the way to go is colossus brother and uh if you have any and emma emma i'd probably go emma even before sinister if you have her so colossus Emma, then Sinister is the way I would go for that node. Unfortunately, they all have mutant gear. So if you could only do one, uh, probably going to be Colossus. And if you have, unless you have some crazy yellow or red stars on Emma. All right, nice question, brother. Have you noticed in raids that AV gets obliterated? Six straight enemy attacks, all targeting AV. AV gets the health boost to survive, but won't target anyone else. Then gets wiped off the face of the planet by the four other symbols. They finish a the node, full health. It was AVA7 in Ultimus 7.5. It's like a stealth taunt on him, like on Human Torch. So uh, he is a support character, and I've heard that support get uh, targeted a little more. And I'm not sure what where you have him built, but if he's the lowest health character, uh, the AI might cue in on that as well. I'm not sure how the algorithm works. So this is just based on what I've seen. So a lot of anecdotal evidence, but yeah, I, I don't. I'm not sure why, but I, it could be that he has low health or. He has uh, that uh, support tag on him. Those are the two explanations that I can think of. Unless they have some strange thing in the code that they just eliminate anti-venom. Valley Flying, how strong does my aim team need to be to beat missions 7.1 to 7.3 of villains? Also, what team should I use for 7.4 to 7.6 of villains? So 7.1 to 3 aim I've, I'm hearing in the 160 to 180 K is the minimum that you want your aim to be. Uh, I've, I've heard of people doing it with with teams less than that but they're very random but i think it gets consistent in that 160 to 180 range as far as the minimum and as far as villains 7.4 to 7.6 those are the, that's a node that requires mystic villains and you're going to get some overlap with the villain mystic controllers that unlock phoenix so mordo loki ronin those are good characters that you can bring in uh, also, Thanos, Juggernaut, good tanks, good protection. I think a lot of this is going to be based on where your roster is and the red stars and the gold stars and where you have these guys built. So those are some recommendations for villain mystics. But uh, if, if for some reason you're, you're trying to complete this, you don't have that all the stars on that node and you have a Hela, maybe maybe you have the shards for Hela and you were able to unlock Ebony Maw. Uh, bring in those characters. Those are some of the best villain mystics, but because 7-6 is where you unlock Hela, you may not have Hela, and then that means you may not have Eddie Maw either. So uh, start with those characters, Mortal, Loki, Thanos, Ronin, Jug Juggernaut, and uh, if you have high yellow or red stars on them, try them out in that game mode as well. But uh, hopefully that helps you get through these uh, nodes in the villains. Hope you're doing well, brother. Quick one. Did they just release talks and posted something on social media? Talking cryptically about another symbiote bound to Eddie uh, Brock. Then in the comment section mentioned being the teaser. Did I see this? Uh, if I didn't, uh, I'll send you a screenshot. So I, I messaged you. I didn't get the screenshots yet. And I did not see this. But uh, here's the thing. that The past few Facebook posts, the past few posts on uh, social media have kind of been like a red herring. Kind of steering us in the wrong direction for these for these characters so uh, maybe maybe they're just trying to throw something off with toxin i mean it, it, it's kind of weird to release this full symbiote team that's so awesome and then very soon after that releasing another character to go on that team i mean maybe it's something to do but i'm, I'm not expecting it anytime but i would like to see those screenshots so if anybody has those uh make sure you tag me on my discord server i can check those out and hopefully react to it hopefully some big stuff but 
They, I think they troll a lot on that Facebook account. Uh, mid high game player here, 5.5 million. Should I go all in a symbiotes? Uh, Spidey Carnage already T13, Venom 13. What are your thoughts on this new team? I think they're awesome. Uh, like I said, two teams that I went all in on. First was the Black Order. Second was the Symbiote. So I think they're great. One is really good in Arena. One is really good in the raid. So I, if I were you, I would. And I did it. So hopefully that helps you. Valley Flying, big hello from the Appalachian Mountains. Love your content and find it very helpful. Here with 40 Red Star Orbs, 10 Elite Fours, tried Seed Theory, only open a 7 Red Star Anti-Venom. Sad face. I get the next day. And open the free ones from the calendar. Nope. Elite five from that. Nope. Elite five or uh, the ones from the calendar. Nope. Elite five or four. Nope. Elite five. Boom. Oh, first seven red star uh, anti venom. It seems like I'm not sure, but it seems like the drop rates for anti venom are a lot higher, especially the drop rates in this red star orbs. It seems like a lot of people are getting some good pulls for anti venom. But again, it may be just uh, people that get the good ones that are reporting it. So it makes it seem like it's a lot. Do you believe in seed theory? It seems to work for OMG. Uh, I don't believe in it, but I don't disbelieve in it either. I've, it, it seems odd. There seems like a lot of chance, especially with my pulls. But there's some weird pulls that seem better than they should be. So uh, there could be something to seed theory, but I don't necessarily believe or disbelieve in it. I'm kind of neutral right now, but... There's, there's some weird things that go into this game, so it is possible. I know they had that patent. Uh, Combat had that patent a while back, so yeah, maybe maybe there is something to it, but I don't know. Uh, do you think that the upcoming Blade and Morbius movie characters will get their own team or slot into Supernatural? Keep up the great work, and I'll keep watching. Uh, I have not heard too much about Blade and Morbius rumors, but uh, maybe that's something for the section with Drew later on. So we'll, we'll see what if he has anything on these characters, but... Yeah, well, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Uh, love the videos, dude. Keep up the good work. Question about anti-venom. According to the MSF.GG, his assist will apply the opposite of a thousand random positive effects to the primary target. Does this mean he should only ever be a striker for ISO classes? I think most of the time. I don't want to say ever because there are some scenarios where you might want to run a full healers on your symbiotes if you really need them to survive. I've heard fortify at the higher levels. And I'm talking three and on is pretty good. I haven't used too many resources to test it out for myself, but there may be situations you want in another class, but most of the time I'd say yes. A uh, striker is the best class for anti-venom. So that I would leave it on that most of the time, unless you're running a specific scenario that will require symbiotes to have another tag on them or another class on them. What do you think about this? Hulk still yes to feel like the Hulk in the game, even after his multiple reworks. I have the solution. Replace his basic and his with his current ultimate. That, that would be good. And replace his ultimate, which should have been his ultimate one day. Attack all enemies. Thunderclap. How is Hulk's most iconic move not his ult? He is the strongest Avenger, so he should have the highest damage protector in the game. Yeah, I don't even like him as a protector. I want him as a brawler. But if they're going to make him like the Hulk should be... Yeah, make make his basic a adjacent target attack and make his ultimate a big AOE. I would love that, but I would I would love any love that Scopely, aka Fox, next shows to the Hulk because they they've given him a couple reworks. He's gotten better. He's not a total trash character now, but uh, he could be even more. He could be even more, guys. So Scopely, keep going with it, Valley. I want to see at least two alpha orbs in a, or I see two alpha orbs in a sword. Looks like Scopely is doing another round of new Greek order orbs. You think if people are asking getting reimbursement for the shards they lost, they will do this. Last time I had 1980 shards towards a gamma orb. I didn't complain because one lost orb is a concern, but this is the third time Scopely has traded these. We're missing out on a lot. Yeah, I don't like this. I've never been a fan of these. I don't like that they switch these. They don't switch the other orbs. But every so often they switch. And I think the reason for that is to combat hoarding. But if they were just put some good rewards on these, people would be opening them and not hoarding them. So, yes, if, if, if I don't have an orb that I need the contents of right away, I'm just going to hoard it. So I think the intention was to stop the hoarding. That's why they're switching this up. But it's, it's not good. It's not a good player friendly choice. It doesn't make me happy. It doesn't make you happy. So hopefully it's something that they look at and stop doing this and treat it more like the megas and uh, premiums they're switching out characters but not switching out the whole orb so we lose the whole orb i, I don't like that uh they valley what does scopely nerf about the alpha raid orbs the old alpha raid orbs give us more shards towards phoenix 
and is replaced by the new, which is mainly supernatural shards. So uh, I could just be Scopely being mean. They don't want you to unlock Phoenix right away. They want me. They want more supernatural out in the wild. And may maybe this is something to do with uh, some supernatural rumors that I'm hearing about, but maybe not. Maybe it's just uh, they they want you to build supernatural and not get Phoenix as easy. Uh, hey, Valley, thanks for all you do for the community. I only have Symbiote Spider-Man and Dark Dimension 3 already, but on Node 7. You love using Anti-Venom already after a few days, so would you go with Carnage or would you do two Symbiotes for the City? No, so if you're going to go two Symbiotes, it needs to be Symbiote Spider-Man and Carnage. Carnage gives the speed based on the damage that is done. If Whenever they drop below 50, uh, 25%, the enemies, whenever they drop below that, they will get some turn meters. So you're not going to get that with Anti-Venom. You're going to get a little bit of uh survivability with that regeneration with some healing but I, I think the the way you go with symbiotes is symbiote spider-man carnage venom so the original three and then you go with anti-venom and scream that's the order i would do them in specifically for dark dimension three but uh if anybody has more play testing on this specifically uh let me know because that, that's more based on theory crafting uh you provide the best overall msf content in my opinion thank you brother i try my best and it's always good to hear from you guys uh, about when you guys like stuff. So almost at DD3 level player. Uh, should I focus on T4s on one team or spread them out a little to make sure each one is efficient like Magneto's passive? So when talking about T4s, when talking about gold and silver promotion credits, I think usage is very important. And the way I like to upgrade my characters, first arena, then make sure I could do all the content that my alliance is at in the raids, the current level content in the raids. And then after that, you can spread the love with your T4s, but I want to make sure that I have a solid arena team and a solid raid team before I start to move on to these, some of these luxury picks. So that is what I do, uh, depending on what you're doing in your alliance for war and blitz and maybe making more sense to spread these T4s a little more throughout various teams. But I like to focus on arena raids. And then after that, once I have that set, then I'll focus on other teams and uh, other game modes. Hey Valley, after 645 days of playing MSF, I unlocked Ultron in under two weeks. Thanks again for your great content and guidance. So nice, congratulations on that. Ultron unlocking him is a very big milestone. Now back in the day, once people unlock them, they would bring Ultron into Dark Dimension 2 for the second run and just auto that thing. Uh, you can do that with the symbiotes if you already have them built. And it's not a bad idea to build them up to gear tier 13, not just for specifically for Dark Dimension 2, but for other content. And if you want to go with them for your team for city lanes in Dark Dimension 4, well, yeah, they could they could pretty much uh, almost auto those nodes. They could one shot those nodes. But yeah, you bring them up. But uh, Ultron should be able to do it. Dark Dimension 2, you should be able to ult uh, auto the whole thing with Ultron. But if you don't have the gear for him, Symbiote will be very good in that game mode. Uh, what is up, brother? I think Night Nest Rework will make her insane, just like the old days. I think it's a tribute to you, frontline healthcare workers. Remember where you heard this first? All right, we heard it from Black Costume Spidey first. And he says, Savage is better than Flair, is better than Hogan. That is debatable, so I won't get into that one. But I do want to address the Night Nurse uh, Rework rumors because that was rumored, I think, about six months ago. And I think the publication was Game Informer. And they talked about a rework to Black Widow. They talked about real-time PvP. They talked about also about a rework to Black Widow, which came to the game. The only thing that they did has not come yet is that Night Nurse rework. And yeah, I hope she's good. I hope she's as good as she once was. She was a vital raid character back in the day, and now she's a trash character. So it would be nice to see her brought back into some relevance. Hey, Valley, my symbiote team. Symbiote Spider-Man, six red, six yellow. Anti-Venom, six red, five yellow. Carnage is at five red, seven yellow. Scream's at four red, five yellow. And Venom is at five red, seven yellow. Just wondering, who do you think I should take the six red stars? My tier 14 Carnage surprisingly has the same damage as Scream. So I'm leaning towards Scream. Who should I promote? So a couple of different things. You're asking about a six red star promotion. Uh, your Scream is only five red stars. So to get to that six, you're going to need to get Scream up to five. And that's going to take silver promotion credits, not gold promotion credits. So... Uh, make sure you could do that. And as far as the red stars, the sixth red star, Scream is not someone on your roster that I'd be purchasing that for because at, at right now, she's at five yellow stars and that sixth yellow star is going to do nothing. 
So you could use your silvers to get her up to five yellow stars. I'm going to do the same. My scream is only four red stars. So as soon as she comes into that stores becomes available, uh, I'm going to be looking to purchase that. I, I don't have it saved up yet. It's going to take a while, but uh, that is a character that I'm going to do. Now, six red star uh, symbiote Spider-Man is already there. Anti-Venom is already there. Carnage, I'm not sure if that's the best value. And then Venom, I'm not sure if that's the best value. So I would, I would save your gold promotion credits. And then Scream, use your silver promotion credits for Scream. That's what I would do. That's that's probably what I'm doing in my roster as well. All right. Uh, greetings from UK Valley Fine. Hope you're staying positive and testing negative. I am staying positive and I'm taking two tests during this quarantine and both negative. So, so far, so good. Do you think characters being released are too quick and in too great number? My alliance feels as this is too much. Why can't they give us some breathing space? Should they? Uh, should they? I am not sure. They're balancing a bunch of different things, trying to make it fun, trying to make the most money. And we're getting about a character every probably about a week and a half now, which for me seems a little quick. And I guess for the rest of the lines, it seems a little quick, too. I, I think they should be released maybe every two weeks or so. I'd be a little happier with that instead of a little, little over a week releasing another character. So, yes, yeah, push them out. I, I think every two weeks is a good enough time that we could work on the new characters work on our roster and then uh, still save some for the newer characters that are even more upcoming but that is my thoughts I, I i don't know if they should be or not i don't know all the behind the scene metrics with all this stuff greetings from near pittsburgh so here's my question for iron man rework when on a team of full wave one avengers and facing the black order iron man gains the ability to steal the gauntlet and become empowered iron man and gets an empowered ultimate attack once he ults it kills him black order has rain long enough and arena and needs a hard counter thoughts i'm not sure if just that like a big aoe that's going to kill himself is going to counter the black order because they do so much all their characters have complicated kits so i don't know if that's going to kill it unless that aoe is super super strong but uh yeah i would like to see something thematically like this where wave one avengers counter the black order but uh yeah as it stands in the game right now not not really uh, what is up, Valley? It's been forever. I came back to the game using an alt account after quitting some time ago. Do you think that back in the days when Hellfire Club was... Do you remember back in the days when Hellfire Club was around? I do. Uh, before Pants of Hulk, before Legion of the Cabal, there was only one big giant alliance cluster, and that was Hellfire Club. And yeah, they're, not, they're still around, but just not as uh, not the top cluster in the game with uh, everybody there. Question, if I have enough... To either symbiote, uh, seven red star symbiote Spider-Man or two other characters to six red star. Is it better to get the two to six red star or seven red star symbiote Spider-Man? Which two would you recommend going that route? I uh, think you have Thanos now, but not sure to bring up since Cult isn't six red star yet. Thoughts? Uh, I Again, uh, red star purchasing those promotion credit, purchasing uh, red stars with those promotion credits. That's highly individualized. Thanos is a good option. And uh, as far as six or seven, though, I would recommend uh, going for a couple two sixes rather than one seven. I, I think it's better to spread your wealth, spread the love. Six red star is still a very strong character. Seven gets even crazier, but I'd rather have two characters that are really, really good rather than one character that may fall out of the meta, putting all my resources in that character and then uh, have them get countered by another character and power creep. So uh, I would rather have two, but uh, yeah. Uh, as far as who to T4, or excuse me, who to spend some of these promotion credits on, uh, it's going to be based on your usage. So look at the characters in that uh, realm of some pretty good characters, but the ones that are used, you're using a lot. So, and, and if you're upgrading them, make sure they have that six yellow star in them as well. So uh, keep that in mind with that. So hopefully that helps, but I, I'd rather have two sixes than one seven uh, right now, but that may change in the future. Uh, greetings from Connecticut. I heard a while back they may be retiring a legend character like Fury. Any word? So the way back in the day, it was Reddit that was mentioning this. Reddit, the people on Reddit, the people in the community that were mentioning this. Nothing in a data mine, nothing from the devs, nothing unofficial, no, nothing about that, about retiring a legendary. So uh, they did that with Iron Man, but no word on Star-Lord, uh, Nick Fury getting, getting that uh, permanent legendary status. So... Uh, if, if, if I'm wrong and you guys did hear something official, let me know in the comments. But yeah, as, as far as I know, it's just the community that's been mentioning this stuff. Not, not, not Fox next scopely. Uh, thanks for answering my question. The previous question about who to bring up for my second dark dimension three team. Appreciate the help. 
also brought up Phoenix. So who would you say would be the two teams to set up as? So don't think about Dark Dimension as two teams. Think about it as your nodes. So you got to think about your global characters. Who do you have for global? You have Phoenix. You have Strife. You have Emma, Shuri, and Coulson. So uh, there's a lot on that uh, global that you have. I Strife and uh, Emma, I think, will be good. I've heard some people using Phoenix and Emma instead of Phoenix and Colossus and having pretty good results. I don't have, I haven't used that firsthand with just those two characters. Uh, let's move on to your cosmic. You have Maw, Thanos, and that is it. I think you would need someone like Minerva to bring up on that just to make it a little easier. And uh, maybe, maybe another character, uh, Black Bolt is there as well. So he, he's helpful. Uh, Hela is another good character. So Hela and Minerva, two characters that I would work on for cosmic. And then for City, you have Symbiote, Spider-Man, and Carnage. If you want to make it a lot easier, you could bring up Venom. But just Symbiote, Spider-Man, Carnage can finish those first two nodes of City. And then, then it'll take a while for those other two. But if, if you have other characters that you could bring up, uh, it would be Minerva, it would be Hela, and it would be Venom. And I think you're good for all, game, all, all the different sections in that game mode, brother. Uh, what's occurring, Valley? I like that one. Long time no ass. House move, COVID. Ooh. Uh, well, I hope the move went well and hopefully nobody had COVID. Uh, anyway, when did they change the rewards for Monday Blitz and Red Store Orbs? I'm only getting 25 per shard, uh, shards per tier. Normally, I get a few orbs, but I uh, haven't even got one. When did they change this? So I noticed on this latest iteration of this Sunday Blitz, this Red Star and Orb Blitz, the scores are, are in line with the rest of the Blitzes. So possibly in this last... Uh, Sunday Blitz. They changed over not just the scoring, but also changed over the rewards. But let me let me know that there's, I haven't noticed this until you asked this question. So, but I did notice the scoring. So, if you guys know this, let me know in the comments, and hopefully they could help out. Stad Meister forty five, your brother. Hey Valley, what's your recommendation on AV and Scream T four in order? I'm on a T four budget. Thank you for always having content. So, I would probably go. The ultimate and passive for anti-venom, and then the ultimate for scream in that order. If you're really looking to budget now on those characters, if you have an abundance of T4, you could do all of them. There's you can make a justification for all of them being T4. But if you're on a budget, I would just go scream ultimate, anti-venom ultimate, and anti-venom passive, and in the order that I mentioned earlier. I hope you and your family are doing well. And text from Sin City, what is up, brother? And meaning to ask, since Zemo came to the game. What do you think of calling Hydra 2.0? What about calling them uh, Zydra? I have not called them Zydra, but Hydra 2.0 seems easier, but it's it's whatever can communicate the what team I'm talking about the easiest to the community. So if everybody's calling it Zydra, I'll call it Zydra just so it's easy to communicate. If everybody's calling that team Hydra 2.0, I'm going to call it Hydra 2.0 just so it's easy to communicate. So whatever, whatever it is, it, I'm fine with, but... Um, yeah, I'm probably going to go with what majority of the people call it instead of trying to create my own and trying to create this team. And some people will know what I'm talking about. Some people won't, but yeah, e either one is fine, but I'm going to be calling it whatever. I think the community is calling it a little more, uh, Valley flying when Scopal next says they're adding tunes to mega orb, like captain Marvel and Zemo. There's more than two of these getting added. The newly added tunes are available only on the side pillars, which blesses us with two shards. Was this on purpose or another way for Scopal next to pull over another one on us? I think uh, they're trying to pull another one over. Us. I think this is on purpose. I don't think this is a mistake. I think they're just uh, they're thinking these are farmable now and they're done. So yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, there's I looked in the mega orbs in the main pillar and I was like, there's not a lot of characters that I need here. They didn't look at this, the right and left pillars, but. Yeah, that's 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 cheesy. That's cheesy if they're adding them there and calling them getting added to the mega orbs because it's not a good drop, right? And and it's what two shards max in these characters, pretty disappointing. Uh, for all, first of all, I want to congratulate you on your medal. So yes, uh, won a gold in my division in jujitsu this past weekend and want a silver in the absolute. So I am planning on releasing that video later with commentary. Just actually got the footage for that this morning. 
because my wife was out of town. So I'm planning to do a commentary on that. So thank you for that, brother. As slowly as I'm getting to Dark Dimension 3, I'm wondering who to upgrade to Tier 14. Anti-Venom, Scream, or Venom to join Symbiote Spider-Man and Carnage. Uh, I think the order you do this for Dark Dimension 3 is this. You go Symbiote Spider-Man, then Carnage, then Venom. So yeah, the original Symbiotes, I think those are the, still the three best to take into Dark Dimension 3. And then you go Anti-Venom and then Scream would be last. That's the order I would uh, build these characters up for, uh, specifically for Dark Dimension 3. Uh, Valley, let's smish it. Question, where are you personally taking Ant-Man and Wasp right now? 6664. So I, I take all the characters once I get them to level 6664, uh, except for maybe some of the trash minions down in the day. Down at, down at the bottom of my roster, but any of the new release characters, they're immediately up to 6664, level 60. I think I'm going to take Ant-Man and Wasp specifically to level 70, uh, and then gear tier between 10 and 12, depending on the resources that I have before the full team comes out. So that's where I'm planning. Uh, I don't know how good this quantum team is going to be. Rumors is that they were a war defense team, but as we saw in the blog post, it looks like they're going to have some Dark Dimension synergy. Maybe this is a new Dark Dimension team, but uh, not sure. We don't have enough information on the quantum team yet, uh, but that is what I'm doing with my Ant-Man and Wasp, and hopefully it helps. Hopefully that's the right decision, but I don't know if we're going to know uh, until later. Uh, Valley Flight, have you tried to get Shanksy on the weekly news? I think both of you would have a great time doing it. Uh, I have not tried uh, to uh, ask him on the news yet. Uh, I have someone planned this week, so maybe down the road. I like working with him. We worked with him. We worked with each other on my second channel with some UFC things. Uh, very well spoken, fun guy. He's a guy that would be the fun to hang out with. I met him in real life. So real cool guy. Check out some of his content, guys. And he streams every morning, but not asked him on yet. Uh, maybe, maybe sometime in the future, brother. Hey, Valley Fine. I wanted to raise one topic because I'm not sure if it's known in the community. So not really a question, just kind of a PSA for everybody. Recently changed my alliance, found out at 40, for 48 hours, switching on a new alliance. I can't receive rewards from the Lucid Dream milestone. I received information from Scopely. That is how it should work. Only heard nobody talking about it. I'm writing it because I would like the matter known to the community so others don't receive the problem. So I, I think they added this, the 48 hour cooldown, because people are switching alliances too much. It made shelling too easy. And they added this to combat the shelling. And unfortunately, it hurts players that are leaving their lines for legitimate reasons like this. So uh, it, it is unfortunate, but I think it was done to combat the cheaters. So uh, it sucks, but I, I don't think it's uh, scopely doing the wrong thing here. You could you blame the cheaters for this suckiness of it. But uh, that, that's why I think they added this. All right. Greetings from not yet curfew town in France. Oh, what town could that be, guys? Leave your guesses in the comments. Previous Strike Time video displayed some symbiote stuff. Avengers, Fantastic Four, Emma Frost 2, and some Guardians of the Galaxy stuff, and some people working on their Gamora. Maybe pure coincidence, but it turned out to be pretty related to what we got in-game. New one display with Ant-Man, Quantum, Jessica Jones, Gwen, XM, some Young Avengers, Wiccan, Hulkling. Does any of the names I mentioned ring a bell to Drew? I don't know. Let's go look at see what was on the on the uh, strike time episode boom so we see the background here and all of these are relevant we see this ed two empire comics here captain marvel scrolls so maybe something happening with captain marvel giving her a team i think she's kind of uh in a weird place right now you could fit her on a few different teams but she doesn't have a solid home so maybe something with the scrolls maybe something to do with this scream comic right here we see ant-man comic here we see another ant-man comic down there uh, this looks like a Jessica Jones, possibly. Uh, yeah, this is a Jessica Jones from when his head was uh, moved in a different direction. We see uh, Spider, uh, Gwen Stacy right here, excuse me. So Gwenpool, Magneto, Hulkling, and Wiccan. We see mo some Marvel Zombies comic. We see X right here. So kind of in line with that Magneto. We see Emma Frost and then that Ant-Man. So a lot of, lot of different hints here. But uh, Drew, I guess we'll ask you. Do any of these names that were mentioned ring any bells to you, brother? Ah, oh, good morning, Valor. Yes, the bells are ringing. Drew, the Rimmer guy here. And all of those names are ringing bells, mate. But the Rimmer I wanted to discuss was one brought up on your live stream. Someone had an alliance, mate, claiming to be part of the dev team. And a while back, they were upgrading Ant-Man and Wasp. Told you about it when it happened, and we all know how that turned out. And now, recently started putting some T4s and upgrading the original Peter Parker Spider-Man. And a gothic team was mentioned as his landing spot. So, 
Let me know who are some gothic characters with ties to Spider-Man that could be coming to MSF. That is all for now, mate. Don't worry. I'll be back. All right, an original Spider-Man being built up by some devs in alliances. Uh, might not mean too much, but they were building up Ant-Man and Wasp a few uh, while back, and Drew did mention that, so maybe, maybe there is something that Spider-Man getting his own team and a gothic team. What could that mean? There's some names mentioned on chat this morning in the live stream, but uh, yeah, let me know your guesses in the comments, guys. Who do you think would be in a gothic team with original Peter Parker Spider-Man? Curious to see who you think. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe, like, smish the like button and join uh, the Discord server if you want to get your uh, question potentially featured on the Mailbag channel in the future. Hopefully I see you guys in the morning on the live stream every weekday morning on Twitch, Valley Valleyfine76 between 7 and 8 in the morning central time normally. Sometimes there's some issues to start a little late, but I hopefully will see you there. Give me a Hulk fist bump before you leave. Valley Valleyfine, out!